I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, I would just like to, well, first of all, introduce myself. So for those of you who might not know me, I'm Rosemary Soto, and I'm here in the County Administrative Office. And um, the 2020 Census Complete Count Committee is one of my assignments. So um, I want to thank you all for being here. I think this is the largest group that we've had so far. We've met the three times. Yes! <laughs> thank you, United Way, for giving us some applause. Um, so if we can just do a quick uh, round of introductions before we get into our agenda. We have a pretty packed agenda, and we want to make sure that we can accomplish as much as possible within this two-hour frame, because nobody wants to stay after five, right? Right. No one cares. Okay, so uh, can we start here? Norman, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. I see you in the back. Manuel Valencia, representing the board of LULAC 2055, as well as the uh, Community Health Board um, from Monterey County. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Nina Alvarez, First Five, Monterey County. Good afternoon. This is Jasmine Williams from uh, the Housing Authority and the Office of Specialists. Suzanne Cook Turner, I'm also with the Housing Authority. Davina Lopez, partnership specialist representing the U.S. Census Bureau. Glenn Schaller from the Monterey Bay Central Labor Council, AFL CIO. Natalia Molina with the Alliance on Aging. And recently elected trustee for MPC. All right. All right. I'm Claire Margeson with United Way, Monterey County. I'm Erica Matadamas with the Community Foundation. I'm Tom Taft with the Salinas Valley Chamber of Commerce. <coughs> Wes White with the Salinas Homeless Union. Oh, Dred with uh, Voices of the Street. Great, thank you. Hi, I'm Yuri Anderson with the Supervisor Mariano's office. And also recently elected to the Monterey Peninsula College. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Claudia, would you like to? Claudia Melendez with the Alsa Union School District. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. We can go back to the middle table here. Okay. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Sonia Heredia with um, Bajaro District. Thank you. Um, Irene Garcia with Greenfield Rotary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Avalina Torres with Greenfield Rotary. Mm -hmm. okay. Beatriz Diaz representing my community in Greenfield. Greenfield right. is showing up. Yeah. <laughs> the table's back there. Right. The house. Hi, I'm Eric Palmer with the City of Monterey's Communications Office. And I'm Jay Punker with the City of Monterey as well. I'm an analyst in the City Manager's Office. Hi, good afternoon. My name's Tori Del Favreau, and I'm with the Census Bureau. Mm -hmm. My name's Bob DeVille, and I'm with the U.S. Census Bureau Partnership Specialist. Great. Very well. Adam Garrett, the Lewis Water Ranch Partner. Jesus Ramirez with uh, Robin Bilingue. Christina Andrade with Health Project Center. Eric Samuel with the City of Salinas. Anastasia Wyatt with the City of Salinas. And my South County people, mm -hmm. you don't have to do just this census, there's the homeless census coming up. Mm -hmm. So we need people to volunteer for that. We're here. And then we have from CSUMB, Ask Kim. Right. interns in our office here and then we have a couple of people walking in we'll let them settle in those who are sitting um at, in your chair separately we'd like to invite you to join the table there's um plenty of seats and we'd like to engage everybody as much as possible and um would you like to introduce sure maria magaña from central coast center for the Better living serving the community with disabilities mm -hmm. And then Linda, you're the last one. If you oh, like to hello, you. Linda Gonzalez, uh, Chief of Staff with Supervisor Luisa Alejo's office. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and get right into our agenda. Um, what we basically like to just review a little bit about um, our timeline is pretty much we're in line with the state's requirements. We're pr trying to make sure that we meet our deadlines around that. And in essence, our county responsibilities are to form this uh, complete count committee, ensuring that we have a complete count throughout the entire county. Um, this, the census this year is a little bit different than it has been done in the past, where a lot of the responsibilities of the local impact, it, it, it falls on, on the counties. Um, and we also are um, encouraged to, um, to to help with recruitment of hiring enumerators and staffing that support um, the work on the, at, the, at the Census Bureau. Um, <clears throat> what I do want to share is this is the timeline. 
this is available online. I can certainly send the link and I can also um, make sure you have this electronically. If you've, you've been here in the last couple of meetings, you've seen this before. And this is in essence um, the timeline that tells us when things need to be done. For example, um, our deadline to opt in to receive our allocation from the state, which is 401,699. Um, and that is what we have a deadline of uh, early February, February 9th, to submit a board resolution as well as opting in to receive those funds. Then subsequently, soon after that in March, we have a deadline to submit a strategic plan. So we're going to spend the bulk of this afternoon working on the strategies and the details that should go within that strategic plan. So we have a couple of ideas of how to structure that and we'll go over that some more as well. Um, then we have beyond that in March, um, in the beginning of April, we have to submit a quarterly report. Now to coincide with that, we also want to launch what is our uh, formal county-wide complete count committee. So basically think of it as leading up to, to April, we've been working on all the details and getting, every, getting all of our ducks in a row. And then we want to uh, make sure that we start communicating to the public, to the general community, what we have in terms of plans and how we intend to do this throughout the next couple year and a half or so that we have to do this. Um, in 2020, um, we have, is when the Census Bureau begins to launch their, um, the, the actual, the release of the surveys that happens in the earlier part of the spring of, of 2020 is what I believe. And then um, they, they, we begin to uh, keep track of what the responses are and then assist with, all throughout all that whole time we have to begin to launch our communication strategies and our outreach strategies to our communities, especially, especially the hard to count populations. Um, and so, any questions on the timeline? Is that a little clear or not as fuzzy? Um, so in essence, this is what I just described as our responsibilities is to form this committee, staff this committee, and ensure that we implement the, the strategic plan that is uh, listed in there. Welcome. Come on in and join the table if you have, there's a few chairs, I believe. Um, we do have representatives from the U.S. Census Bureau, so if there are any updates in regards to um, what's coming down the pipeline, now's the time to share that. I know that um, I was uh, recently at, the state has a, um, a governor's complete count committee, so that is a statewide complete count committee. And at the most recent one, there were a couple of updates, and so I can go ahead and share them. And if you want to correct me if I'm wrong or provide additional information, you're welcome to do that. Um, as I mentioned, they kick off the massive campaign March to April of 2020. Um, they have a few dates set up for the homeless count, which is March 29th, 30th, and 31st. And um, in terms of hiring enumerators, a big question that we have had is, um, will, the hire, will the hiring process require US citizens for um, uh, applying and hiring? Or, and so um, we kept hearing that it was, yes, that you have to be a US citizen to apply and be hired for the Census Bureau. So what I heard on December 5th in Sacramento was that they will first exhaust the pool of citizens and then move on to non-citizens with um, permission to work. So that's what I have heard. Is that, is that correct? Okay, great. It's like I get a point for being right. Um, and then we still have the concern, just right off the bat, um, you've heard this before about the citizenship question. We discussed this at length in our last two meetings. And um, so that still continues to be something that um, everyone across the state is concerned. And what we're looking, we do not have any concrete information up to now in regards to whether a no response, to skipping that question, I'll, I'll back up. In our last couple of meetings, um, we've discussed having a campaign that um, supports uh, skipping that question. So just everyone all together, the general message would be skip the citizenship question. Um, that is because it's so difficult for us, you as trusted um, community leaders or organizations that are serving our community to encourage a complete filling of the survey and including that question when we don't know what the repercussions 
of uh, responding to that question, whether yes or no answer, what might be, right? What, what might come from that? So it's a very difficult, it's a predicament that we're uh, asking ourselves to put ourselves in. And so um, then that's when we discussed a couple of meetings ago, those of you that were here were a part of that, that we then just encourage to skip the question. And we're not the only county considering that. There are others that are, are going with that. And so it might be statewide that that's the general message. Um, however, the question to that has been, so then if you have a certain number of people that are uh, skipping that question, does it prompt a visit from an enumerator, like a, a phone call or a personal visit? So that might be another concern. Um, so some of the side conversations have been, well, does this, do they have enough enumerators to, res to go to every address if, if the majority of the people are not responding to that question? You know, probably not, but that's generally where we are with that question. So I think um, we, we'll kind of stick with that, with you know, skipping the question, um, unless we need more discussion on that, and we, we can definitely do that. We might not have time to get to delve into that today, but that's something I just want to make sure that we're conveying because it's definitely a, a huge concern and we're, we're talking about it all over the place. Any questions or comments on that so far? Um, <coughs> I have a question about the homeless census. Yes, go ahead. Um, so I know that we're doing the point in time count, which I talked about earlier. Um, and how, how does the point in time count fit into the census? The point in time it's count is totally going to be different, or it's, it's, it's totally separate because okay. it's not even within our scope for the count, the county's complete count committee. So okay. it is completely separate, as far as my understanding. Okay, because yeah. you said there was going to be a homeless. Um, That's the U.S. The census, census Bureau's census. dates. Okay, yes. that they were going to do, which are very different than the point in time count. Right. So I'm just. I guess that's it. Bob, do you have a response? Yeah, the, to that yeah the, each city uh, across the state usually has their own homeless count, and it's usually done a year in advance. Uh, in 2020, we, the census, will run their homeless count the last uh, 29th, 30th, and 31st of March, and we will bring in we will bring teams into all the homeless areas. We we'll work together with the cities, the the police departments, and the and the the different organizations that, that help support the homeless so that we get a complete count with those people there. So it will run completely separate from okay. your, the city That's the city count. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Yes, following up on that citizenship question, I was in on those last meetings. And last November, I thought we had decided that we were going with the no skip. And we had, actually, I believe we had a, 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 somebody from the federal uh, census a few, including okay. some in this room now, mm -hmm. and they all verify that they skipped one question and that would be not be problematic. And and then this morning at our that legislative meeting where you briefed them, you noted that there was some confusion. So w was there a meeting that, at that governor's meeting? Is that where the confusion came up? I mean, what changed? Um, the only thing that was was changed. I'm not sure if it was well, maybe it could be confusing, but. Basically, there was no, um, when we heard it from the, the federal level report out from the U.S. Census Bureau, that representative reported out that there was no guarantee that not responding, skipping that, that skipping the question would not prompt a visit from an enumerator. <coughs> so that, that was the only thing, whereas that was something new that we had not heard before, like we hadn't considered or discussed before. So the general message across the board, it was agreed to skip the question. To, that would be like the general message, but what we hadn't discussed was what does that do? What does that cause? Another um, consequence that we, it would that would um, prompt a visit. So um, we had been told previously that it is commonplace that for people to skip questions that it happens, and unless you skip a majority of the survey, it probably wouldn't prompt a, a visit from an enumerator. But because this citizenship question is new, and we're still quite unsure of the purpose of this, informa this particular information, the U.S. Bureau representative at that level could not provide a public um, response to that question because that was definitely a question brought on from members of that, the governor's committee asking what is the purpose, why do you want this information, and how will it be used. Mm -hmm. 
and one was not given. So we don't we don't know. This question is unique. It's very it's it's not like other questions that can be skipped and still counted and not prompt um, a, a visit. So at this point, there's uncertainty around that. So um, you mentioned that we can discuss it at a, a later meeting, like when do you envision the next January meeting, or when would be a good time to discuss this or dive into it? Um, I think my only concern with the time that we have and to dedicate to that conversation, we can, if, if we feel, if the general group feels we need a lot more discussion on this question in particular and how to handle it, um, I think we can have some of that in our breakout sessions and then um, in January again. So we, we, can, we can do that. Regina? Yeah, I missed last meeting, and I came in late for this meeting. In terms of the hiring um, process for census enumerators, um, is there going to be like a point of contact, and when is the hiring going to start? And also, um, in terms of people that are um, maybe on probation and things like that, are there restrictions as far as who can be hired to be a census enumerator? So those are more questions that I don't have the answer to, but um, we have our census department you know specialist here. Yeah. yeah, I'll answer that. Um, so right now the census are already ongoing recruiting processes um, for the second wave of ACOs that are going to be established in California. The closest one here is going to be in San Jose. So there's ongoing <coughs> recruitment efforts that are going for uh, recruitment managers, IT specialists, administrative positions at the moment. And then they will move on to different positions that will be offered, such as address canvassing, and enumerators once the census gets closer. And that's when most of the bulk of positions will be offered during those sections. So that's probably down the road yeah. then, um, in terms of the people that may have probation, people that are released from incarceration, um, are they not able to? There's not any restrictions for them, but it's okay. just going to be based on qualifications. Based on qualifications. Yeah. Okay. So I, I suspect that that part hasn't like been covered yet. Yeah. OK. All right. Thank you. You have a question over here? Yeah, so is there kind of a, a link or someplace where people can go? Yeah, definitely. Interested? It's on 2020census.jobs.gov yeah. and usajobs.com. Okay. One, one more thing that comes yes, okay. uh, There is a, uh, some jobs that will be happening in uh, 2019. In the, in the summer of 2019, we'll be, do ad, we'll be doing some address canvassing. That means we'll have to hire people to go out and verify new locations, new subdivisions, new housing areas, housing areas that are no longer there, just to verify all addresses. So in that in the time frame of this 2019 summer, we will start we will start hiring people probably in the April time frame for the jobs that will start at the beginning of June. The reason why we we'll start we start hiring in the beginning of April April is because we have to have a certain amount of pool. A lot of people who apply for the jobs early enough, at that time they received a job or they got something else going or they moved from the area, whatever. So we have to have a large enough pool in order to draw people from, in order to get those jobs filled. And then they have to go through a, um, um, a background check, have fingerprinted. So they'll, they'll be called in advance, let them know that they've been selected, they'll be asked a few questions. Uh, they will do a background check, and then they, sometimes they'll ask you for fingerprints. And then the job would start in the beginning of June. They would go through a week's training, and they would work whatever time period it needs, which is usually, usually a couple of weeks. So the hiring process, it, to sum that up, is about how many, like three months? Uh, probably start two to three months before the job starts. And then when they, the job starts, the exercise will go for about six weeks. Okay. And one of the and answer to her question there is, um, in most cases, if you have a major felony, you probably would not be hired by the census. Um, you, do, you are required to have a social security, have an email address, and an address, an address to be hired. So. so a homeless person who may know their homeless population that may have a prior record probably won't be someone that could get hired. Well, it all depends on what, if it's a, um, a major criminal uh, offense, probably not. But if it's a, a minor shoplifting or whatever, they, they, they could, be, could be hired. But they also need to have an address. So what, what we would suggest that people do is they would work with one of the local community centers or soup kitchens or someplace like that and use their, that address and an, an email address through a library or something like that. So is there like a prohibitive crime list that we could look at now to see what they would not qualify? Unfortunately, no, okay. there isn't. Thank you. One more question?
Yes, I just wanted to clarify. So in the future, not today, but in the future, we will be having more discussion about the uh, the citizenship question. It yes. sounds like that's what we're heading towards. Yes, because we, de we definitely need to I flesh that out some more, especially as we get into how do we implement strategies <coughs> and develop messaging, because that's going to be that's going to be critical. So that that conversation is going to be ongoing, and I just I was just uh, referring to this for the sake of today's time that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, Bob. It's uh, my understanding that uh, the it's in litigation right now. That question is, the they're supposed to have a decision by the middle of March, and so us as part of the center, we really can't discuss it because we have to wait to what happens on the litigation before before we will know how we can discuss it with you. Okay. 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 And then for those in the room who might not be aware, the county did join in on that litigation <coughs> with the state of New York, along with a few other counties. So just so that you know, we're very much engaged. We have our county council back there visiting us today, so I'm not going to put them on the spot for an update, but you know, basically we're, we're waiting on that too. Um, okay, I'd like to move on to share with you what um, structure for our committee. We discussed this at our last meeting, and this is what uh, we arrived at in our discussion. Um, for those of you that attended it before, you saw this revised version. Uh, in an email, and then um, I think I did send it out as well for those who are RSVP for today, but some of you are, might be looking at this for the first time. So I'll just walk, walk through it. Basically what we what is encouraged to us is that we have a steering committee. A steering committee that consists of um, particular representatives of different um, areas, different uh, areas of expertise or different groups that are representative of the county. So it's generally a smaller group that helps to advise the process and also um, helps to follow the implementation of the strategic plan. Um, and so that group at this point has not met yet. If you are interested in being a part of that steering committee because you feel that you're representing a specific uh, population in our county that should definitely have some voice at that level, um, we would invite you to contact me and let me know of your interest. Um, some of you I might be um, contacting directly as well. Um, so that's still in for me. Um, then we have the um, <coughs> media action team. The media action team would be a group of representatives from local media and, and community-based organizations who would be specifically engaged around the media strategies, who would want to assist with that process um, in working closely with our local media representatives. So um, one of the details about why it's important to have a local media action team is because there is a statewide um, funding pool that is going to be released. It hasn't been released yet. Um, and that is part of the, the 93 million total, right, that, was that the state has allocated. <coughs> However, that is going to be for statewide media strategies. So um, more of your micro, local media strategies is up to us to, to determine and to figure out how to implement them. Um, and so we, it's something that we could budget into our county allocation or into the allocation that is for the administrative CBOs, which was just released on Friday, and there's more details on that that I could share. Um, then the next team would be the outreach action team. So this might be uh, like your community-based organizations, your school representatives, higher education institution representatives, like community college and local universities, our um, health organizations, and then libraries perhaps. And that list can continue to grow. That's just an example. And then we have your city, county action team, which be, would consist of city and county representatives working together to ensure that we're implementing the strategies in those respective regions or, or municipalities. So all together, this is what this structure would look like. Now this is what we had discussed over the last couple of meetings, and so this is where we are. So for the purpose of today, and then also something to think about for how do we fully implement this process and our strategies, is to think about how do we use a regional approach as well, because um, we have to think countywide, and our needs are varying, you know, our hard-to-count populations exist pretty much in every region of the county, but they might look different in the south as it does in the north. So that's, those are um, some areas that, uh, for the sake of today and for our breakout um, working session that I would like us to do, 
is to think about this from a regional approach. So um, what I mean by that is looking at North County, who in North County are our key partners, what are the hard to count populations in that, in that area, and North County would be north of Salinas to Pajaro, right? And that Aromas and all the Castro, all those communities. And the same goes for South County. And then Central, we don't call it Central Monterey County, right? I'm wanna, I'm, can I start something? <laughs> Salinas, basically. <laughs> hashtag Central Monterey County. And then West Monterey County? No. No, it's not going to fly, right? I only thought I could start a movement. Anyway, so Salinas and then Peninsula. So the Peninsula. So those are basically our general four regions in the county that um, most other initiatives have taken these approaches before, so it's nothing new to us. But, um, so for the sake of today, what we have, and um, we'll, we'll share these out. Oh, basically this is a, a, a template that I would like us to take some time to, to use and at your tables, we'll have one for each of the regions. And we'll ask you to move around and, and join a table that is that is focused on the region that you feel you most represent or you, you would be able to contribute the most to. And basically what we would like to walk away with today is some very de some good details about what is happening in that region. So what is the hard to count population for that region? Um, this is an example. Maybe it's the farm worker, migrant farm worker community. And what would be a challenge for this particular population? It might be a language barrier. I know there's many others, but this is an example. So what would be a strategy? Perhaps radio outreach um, in the language that's most relevant, which might be Spanish. Okay, and so what is the action that's needed? We need to produce radio uh, PSAs that are relevant and culturally, you know, just make a connection with that community. And we need to air on Radio Bilingüe, sorry, I didn't know you were coming, but something was. Radio Bilingüe and La Campesina, because I, I personally know that those are two very well listened to stations in our community, so maybe that is the way that we need to go. Um, so we need to be specific about how, to, how would we best reach this community if radio is our strategy. So who, and then who are our key partners? Well, we already mentioned two of the partners, two of the stations, who else is missing? Do we need a CBO who works very closely with this community who would be able to assist in developing the story or developing the PSA? Who is that organization? And then finally, funding needs, because we need to get to a point where we're determining how to allocate the funds and what's needed. We already know right off the bat that we don't have enough to cover everything that's needed, but we have to start somewhere to figure out how do we um, best allocate our fraction of, of the allocation that we have from the state. Um, so what is what, what might be the estimated cost to make that happen? So um, does anybody have any questions around how do we do this? Um, only I'm jumping ahead a little too long when we do the small group work. Mm -hmm. So for an agency or a CBO that it works countywide, how what would you suggest how would you suggest we work like this afternoon? Um, I think it might be ideal for you to select, maybe think about what is, um, if, you, if you work mostly in Salinas, for example, if, if you're based in Salinas and most of the population you serve is in Salinas, maybe go to that group. But if, um, it's, it's going to be really tough because if you're a county-wide organization, I, I don't want you to feel pressured to be at every table. Um, maybe if you can just make a note on here that, you know, the strategy applies countywide. But, you know, you're thinking regionally, but if you think that this particular HTC, this particular strategy is something that needs to be done countywide, if you can simply note that, and that way we know that this is going to be something that's not unique to that region, that that, that table that you're sitting in. Does, does that sound like a fair way to approach this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just to clarify, the media outreach team is going to be helping um, develop the messaging yes. that goes with these hard to count populations. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. We just need to start somewhere and developing those ideas for strategies and flush them out. And we might end up with, uh, I don't know, so many of them and then as a group, as we as we bring them together and you know uh, share it out once it's culminated and summarized, we might realize that it's much more than we can actually do 
but we need to figure out, we need to start with some specific strategies so that that way we can get to a point where we know what is actually feasible for implementation, if that makes sense. Okay, any other questions? Um, also, I just wanted to clarify really quickly. So, um, Mr. <coughs> Salinas is um, intending to form a subcommittee um, as part of the uh, complete account committee that will probably be very similar to the structure you um, had on here. But we definitely um, think it's important that we focus on Salinas issues just because we do have like a very high percentage of the hard account population. So, um, just wanted to let everybody know that that's. Um, we're, we're intending to do that in the future. So. Thank you for mentioning that. So just for, for clarification, <coughs> the cities are not required to form their own complete count committee, but they do have the option to do that. And so that this is the path that this that the city might do it, but not necessarily a separate complete count committee, like not, not duplicating what we're doing. They will still be a part of this committee, but they'll simply have their own focus areas. So like they might obviously be this central, you know, well, hey, it's not central, it's Salinas. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, any questions around that? I want to make sure there's no confusion with that. No? Okay, so if we can go ahead and split up into our groups, if we can make it so that um, right now we're probably, everyone's everywhere. I see Salinas here, so maybe we'll make you... The strategy and who your key partners are. Um, remember your note taker, whoever took notes, and if you know maybe you and the pen, please leave behind your notes because that is what we're going to use to city summarize and to share out with everybody. Okay, can we get everybody's attention and the conversation's rich? How do we do that? Yeah. Oh, Okay, so why don't we start with the peninsula table? Can you share out what is your area? Just just one page, one column. Another will be going to um, 
also going to church and um, giving the announcement there. Okay, great. That's really good. similar hard to account populations um, but their challenges all felt very similar to us so you know fear misinformation um, literacy levels and techno technology gaps we talked about along with other things um, some of the strategies we talked about are train the trainer models uh, also social media campaigns uh, including maybe a YouTube YouTube contest on the best messaging all about the census and how to fill it out um, also a photo novella um, and then also having volunteers from both CSUMB and the high schools. And our key partners include everybody from churches, health clinics, grocery stores, the um, theater uh, organizations in the area, along with the um, ag businesses, the Grower Shipper Association, Veteran Services, and um, Senior Services also. So we need lots of money to do this. Uh, <laughs> and so and, and labor unions, unions, yes, and labor unions, among many other organizations, um, to do radio, prints, social media. Okay, great. Thank you, Salinas. So I think what we could we could all come away with is that in terms of partners, key partners, um, we have folks on our list that are not represented here today. So please, you know, help spread the word. Um, I'm glad that you're noting them down because it helps me be more informed about who I need to reach out to on a one-on-one -on -one level. But it, it, it's a team effort, so it really helps if you help spread the word as well. Um, share out, I mean, the, the emails that you receive from me, it's not exclusive to this group only. Please feel free to share to any with anyone that you think uh, might need it. We also have a Facebook page now. I promise to update that as much as possible. But you know, there's a, we're trying different ways in which we can uh, communicate what we're doing to encourage other partners to get involved or community members who are interested in this work. Um, okay, so I think um, what you've provided today gives us a baseline. Now, we need to talk about funding a little bit um, because we, what we have is a couple of um, things to talk about. First is um, our county allocation, as we know. We've mentioned it a few times, what it is. It's 401 and some change. And so knowing what these strategies are, um, and knowing a little bit about what it might cost, Gives us, and it gives us a place to start, and so that's definitely going to be helpful. Now, we also um, are connecting and working with um, private uh, foundations who are also realizing that there aren't enough funds, and so we're also making the ask. So being able to develop a full budget that really is going to support this work the way that we feel it needs to be done in Monterey County is really going to help us make that ask a whole lot better. And um, so that we're not solely relying on what the state has for us. So um, it's going to be hard, but that's something that we're definitely making the push for. Now, in addition to that, I also mentioned that there was the um, administrative community-based organization pot that was released on Friday, on the 14th. And so there's a 45-day turnaround period for that proposal when it's due. And I'm sorry, I don't know the exact date, but I know it's 45 days from the release. And so what I do want to share is that that ACBO, there's a whole list of requirements that's in the RFP, which again, I promised to send out the link so you can read that through. And um, generally, the, what, one of the, the, I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad thing, but is that um, the organization can apply for up to three regions. So there are, you know, several, we're in region five, right? And there are 10 counties within that region, from what I understand. So that, that entity can apply for more than one region. It doesn't have to be just for you know, this region five, it can be for others across the state or for various counties within that same region too, as well. So that's, that's one thing to note. So it doesn't have to be um, within this group. It could be a, a larger organization if there is one. Um, I think that the best way for us to look at how do we apply for that is to have a coordinated effort. We don't at this point have a specific um, community-based organization who is going to apply for that. 
uh, but we know it has to be a community-based organization. And that organization has to be poised and ready with the infrastructure to turn around and become a grantor, to, to then fund any other organizations that are going to carry out the strategies. So for example, if I was a nonprofit and I have all of that infrastructure, and one of the strategies is to do radio PSAs or to do a fotonovela, so I want to turn around and contract with the radio station, the local radio station, to be able to develop that. If we're going to have a local teatro group, like, you know, we have so many of those, right? If we're going to contract with them to develop the story and act it out and actually do it, so that organization has to be ready to turn around and become a grantor to fund those groups to be able to actually implement it. So those are things that we need to think about, little details in terms of who would be the best um, as administrative CBO to do that. And so there's a whole host of, of requirements. Those are just a couple that I'm mentioning right off the top of my head. But there are others. It's a 62-page document. Don't be too scared because a lot of it is the formalities. But then there are a lot of details in the requirements that are very important to consider when uh, we think about who that ACBO is going to be. I don't expect that we walk away today with an identified ACBO, but we don't have a lot of time. So we need to be thinking about who that might be. Um, so I don't know if um, we would like to, I don't think we can wait until the next meeting, but um, we definitely probably need to set up at least maybe a conference call for us to kind of identify or have a steering committee meeting to, dis to, to discuss the ins and outs of what that looks like. And I'm kind of leaning more towards the steering committee aspect of, of determining who should be that ACBO to apply and versus having multiple community-based organizations competing against each other, it might be best that we have one representing the entire county. Question. Can I ask if you had uh, a particular CBO <coughs> in the 2010 census apply as the lead agency, so to speak, or not? Did you um, guys, were you in charge of this? I, 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 unfortunately, I don't have historic information oh. from 2010, so I personally don't know that that answer. Um, question, yes. Have you had any organization offer to? to Not at this idea? point. Um, we might have a couple considering the idea of having to needing to look through the RFP and, and determining if this, that's the best. But we don't have anyone stepping up and saying I want to do it. Yeah. I guess. One more thing. A potential candidate. Okay. I have, but that's that's good. Yes, I welcome ideas if you feel. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think probably the Action Council is probably one of the best mm -hmm. action that because they are, that's what they do. They just re grant and they're yeah. very easy to they have that, that, that stra structure. So. Yeah. Okay. So Action Council, Harden Foundation, the Community Foundation, the Community Foundation, the Community Foundation, the particular ideal structure for the four. You know, for the it is. Yeah. Uh, it is, yeah, it is yeah. that document, and the organizations you're mentioning basically do match that infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It would just probably be a, a matter of them wanting to do it and having the bandwidth to do it. Is that what I missed the. It was Harden Action Council. Another question. No, um, I just checked with Cesar. The Central Labor Council is actually responsible. And being ACB. The ACB. So I'll have to look at Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. So we have a couple of the potential. Great. Okay. So in the interest of time, we're about 15 minutes done. Next steps um, for homework for me will be to summarize everybody's um, uh, to count everybody's uh, areas, and then I'll send that back out. I have a, a bit of items that I promised that I'll send out as well, including our timeline as it matches up with the state as well as the RFP. Um, and we have a meeting scheduled for the next complete crop committee that's in January, uh, the 14th. I will look to secure a bigger room because I think I anticipate we might grow a little bit, hopefully, and that's good. That's a good thing. And, um, so uh, stay posted on the location. This room is reserved for January, but we, we probably need to consider a bigger space as well. On your next thing, uh, can you talk about steering committee then? Yes. So I will schedule something in the next 
Nobody works for Christmas? Can we go to the Just kidding. No, probably the, for the first week of January, we'll, we'll come together or, or we'll have communication with you. Okay. No, 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 no. This dude is around the 14th. Like, I don't have one either. I'll say we're 14th, and then they say 45 days from that. Well, so we're getting close. Like, you know, I'd rather, I mean, I'm, I, I'm sooner the better. You know, for whatever. Okay, well, today's Monday. The day after you have availability from Friday. What do we do Friday? I'll email everybody. Okay, thank you. We'll figure it out. I'll send out a duo poll. There you go. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. Does anyone have the link? Oh, great. Okay, any other questions before I say hello? Hello, we're back around. Just really quick. Hello, we're back around. 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 Okay, I brought some information that I can share with you guys up here, and I, I, I'm ecstatic, ecstatic that so many people are here. It's great. Yeah. And, you know, we do encourage you to invite all your neighbor cities that, that aren't here mm -hmm. to come and be part of this because it is really important for your county. So up here I've got a couple of things that I get. I don't have a whole lot. I have some quick stats that tells you about uh, all the different things in Santa Clara, sorry, in Monterey County, mm -hmm. um, population, mm -hmm. Hispanic population, the housing, the education level, mm -hmm. the health things, uh, different businesses, the economy, different stats on Monterey County here. Mm -hmm. I've got forms up here for jobs, if you want to apply for jobs, what they pay, uh, how to apply, where to apply at, so you can take these flyers and, and post them wherever you like, make extra copies or share them with your friends. Um, one of the big issues that we had with count in the census last time was the young young people, counting kids under five. Mm -hmm. It's a big part of our population. And in the farming communities, we find out a lot of the farm workers are bringing their families with them and they have kids two, three, four years old. And it's important that they get counted. So I've got some forms on why it's, why it's so important that those kids get counted. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of a complete guide, the road to 2020. 2020 is where we have April 1st, we have the, the census, day, the actual census day, and kind of a road map of what we do all along the way to get there. You know, there's different operations that we do. Our big job this year is to get the support of the communities, get the communities involved, because they're the communities, are the ones that benefit the most out of this. Um, languages. We, we're going to have information, I think, in 59 different languages this year. Yeah. Maybe not so much in this county, but if you get into San Jose, San Jose and there's 65 <laughs> different languages spoken in the city. So but we're, the census is going to be available in 50, 59 different languages this year. So it's a list of the different languages that are going to be available here. Uh, the U.S. Census Bureau at a glance. This kind of tells you what the census does, what the statistical values of the census are, and why it's so important that we get the numbers and we're able to determine and give the housing community, the business community, all the different communities this information so they can decide where they want to establish a business in your area or, what, or what's needed. You need a new playground in this area because you have people growing, uh, moving in, putting a new housing com community in there. All that stuff is all done by statistical processes given to you by the census. For you cities that are thinking about doing a subcommittee like the city of Salinas, we have a complete 2020 complete count committee manual type of thing. Tells you what you need to do for your own little city. Now, you don't have to go out as fully to the full extent that the county's doing because that's your job, but get your city involved in part of the process of what needs to be done within your city so that you're working in conjunction with the county. And on the uh, on the census page, there's a thing called Rome, they're called American Fact Finder. It gives you all the information you need to know about what's going on in, in that area. The census breaks down each area into tracks. A track may be three blocks by three blocks. It could be five miles by five miles, all depending upon the population. But you can, with, with the facts in there, you can go, you can pinpoint that specific area. It will tell you the population of that specific area, 
the renters, how many people are renting, how many people are under the age of five, how many people are uh, underprivileged, how many people have graduated from high school, what the average income from each area like that. So Rome is a very big tool that anybody has access to that can go into census, census 2020 and pull out that information and they can find that you can find that for your own specific city where the hard to count areas are, which is very important as we do go forward on that. So this is it. this material is available here. I'm sorry I didn't bring enough to share with everybody, but uh, I, hope, I would hope that at least one each, each city gets a, uh, one of the sheets that they need. All right. Thank you, Bob. One last thing. I shared with you a draft of the resolution that would be going to the Board of Supervisors. Please review that. If you have any recommendations for any key points that you feel are not on here and should be, feel free to email that to me. Um, you, we have about a couple of weeks before I have to submit. Okay, so thank you everybody.